ready? Say, so start talking. <laughs> Lord, I thank you today that you are still on the throne. I thank you that you haven't abdicated for the enemy or some conspiracy or anything like that. God, we love you. We open our hearts to you right now. And we thank you, God, for being so good to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to Fernley, Nevada. It is different preaching into a black hole than it is to look at uh, Regina and Joe. But I'm going to try to preach into the black hole today as much as I can so that I can uh, talk to you all. Praise the Lord. So if you turn with me to Isaiah, the 8th chapter, and we'll just get right into the word. It says, for the Lord, and the 11th verse, it says, For the Lord spoke thus unto me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way this people, of this people, saying, Do not say a conspiracy concerning all that this people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow, let him be your fear, let him be your dread, he will be a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the house of Israel and a trap to the snare of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Now, a lot of people are saying right now, there's a conspiracy. You hear it all the time. I heard it this morning. I hear it on and on and on. Conspiracy, conspiracy. Well, I want you to know that we don't need to be afraid of conspiracy, even if the conspiracies are true. Now, should we take a stand against evil? Absolutely. But should we preach over and over and over and be afraid all the time? No. We need to quit doing that. It says right here, let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. Let him be your sanctuary. So we can choose what we're going to do. In fact, in the 26th chapter, no, no, no. In Isaiah 28, in the 16th verse, it says... Isaiah 28, 16, it says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Remember we used to sing that song? He lays in Zion. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Now go to the uh, 26th chapter where we were going before, and it says in 2 through 4, it says, Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. Uh, look, at, look at that. He says, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. We don't trust in our, uh, well... It's really trust, tough to trust in anything but God right now. Our, our, some, some say our government's wacky, you know. I mean, if you, li if you listen to the news, the secular news every day, you will go crazy and you will be afraid and you'll be freaking out. You want to stay in your house all the time. You'll never want to come out again. You'll shop online. You'll listen online. You'll do everything online and you will not assemble yourselves together again ever. Because it's scary out there, is it not? Ah. Now in Isaiah 25, <laughs> seeing how you're right there, in 8 and 9 it says, He will swallow up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. <coughs> we have waited for him, and we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So God has been showing me this week, what, are, what am, again am I focusing on? I had this morning to take my mind and make sure my mind was focusing on the right direction. So I went ahead and I focused on Jesus. I focused on Jesus who was walking on the water. Walking past in the boat, storm was crazy, black water, black night, everything was crazy. We we're about to drown, and Jesus is over there walking on water. I think the reason he walked on the water, because he didn't want to go around. 
He was just simply the fastest way to shore. So he just walked on across. He just happened to see the boat on the way across. You know, how did they see him? He must have been shiny. Something was going on. I mean, you can't walk on water unless some kind of glory is on you, right? So what I did this morning, I just focused on him walking on the water. And it's like that vision he gave me, standing there in the water going, I'm standing on the water. Dude, I got this. So I thought, okay, I got you, Jesus. I'm okay. Okay, so I stared at the water. So that says in the fifth one, we're going to go to Romans. I got them numbered one, two, three, four, five, because usually I don't get these scriptures in a row. I just read it, and God begins to lay it out for me. So in Romans, the ninth chapter, and this goes right along with what we we're saying. In the ninth chapter, in the 33rd verse, it says, What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, who did not pursue righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone. And here it is. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. We read that in Isaiah also. And whoever believes on him will not be put to shame or will not act hastily. Here we have it again. The rock is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> the thing I'm trying to say here is that fear is from the enemy. Any kind of fear. I get texts from a guy, uh, weekly at least, and never have I ever heard him text me something really cool, something wonderful, something great about God, something wonderful about Jesus Christ. Text me all the time about how terrible this is and how the government is doing this and how the shot's going to give you this and how that. I am not afraid. I mean, I can take up serpents and they don't harm me. I can drink anything poison and it won't harm me. I don't believe you can take the mark of the beast uh, by accident. I think the mark of the beast is something you take on purpose. You can buy and sell and things like that, okay. No, you can't do that. If, if you get a shot, who gives a hoot whether they give a shot or don't get a shot? This is causing division in the body of Christ, tearing things apart, tearing people from people. What about the guys that already got the shot because they were sick and old and they didn't want to get sick? What about those guys? Are they going to hell? Are they doomed? Are they going to die from the shot? God is stronger than a shot. For crying out loud, he's stronger than COVID. He's stronger than anything. You notice that people are getting this thing called COVID. The people finally came out. And the guys who didn't have it before who were in hiding, now they got it. Okay. How many? 97% rate of uh, survival. So people went to the hospital, couldn't breathe. It was tough. It was terrible. But they're alive. My friends are alive. Buster's still in the hospital. Isn't he? Well, he's off intubation, so he hadn't died either, hallelujah, and he was the closest one to it. So here we have this disease. It's terrible. It's awful. I get it. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay. Now, in Romans 9, 25 and 26, it says, What if God, wanting to show his wrath, to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had prepared beforehand for glory. Hallelujah. So here we are seeking God by faith. We're not seeking God by, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And we're not going to do that and I hope we don't get that. Okay? And then we go to uh, Ephesians, the second chapter. And this is a powerful verse. And this is all about Israel was God's people in the first place. Now, we are the spiritual Israel come into uh, salvation by faith in Jesus Christ by what he did on the cross, correct? All right. So there in Ephesians, the second chapter, 11 through 13, we read this. Therefore, remember, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called the uncircumcised, 
by what is called a circumcision made in the flesh by hands. In other words, the Jews call the, uh, the Gentiles the uncircumcised. That at that time you are without Christ, being the aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. That's where we were at as Gentiles. I want you to know, God is good. He is good. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The only reason you can come before God is by the blood of Jesus Christ. That is the only reason. Hallelujah. So, I wrote down here, God has given us an opportunity for we Gentiles to be able to even call on Him as our God or even be called His people by Him. This is a big deal. He's not twisting our arm or begging us to worship Him. He's making Himself the King of all kings, the Creator, the Rock, the Redeemer, El Shaddai, El Rohai, the Great I Am. He is making him, Himself available to us. He is making Himself available. In Joshua, I'm going to read this right before I go on. In Joshua, it says back here in the 24th chapter, and you know these scriptures, 14 and 15, it says, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods of your father you served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. Listen to this now. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your father, the gods your fathers served and were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says, go ahead and make a choice. God isn't twisting their arm. He says, serve the Lord. You guys, this is what's going to happen. But he says, make the choice. And if it seems evil to you, choose for yourself whom you will serve. Praise the Lord. So God isn't twisting our arm to make it. In, in uh, John 6, 68, he, he asked people to drink his blood and eat his body, right? He says, many walked away from him at that point in time. And then he turns it to his disciples. And he doesn't say, are you guys going to follow me? What he says is, do you also want to go away? I mean, what do you want to do? Choose, in other words, this day whom you will serve. In I, uh, Luke 12, 32, it says, Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What, is, what does Peter say to Jesus? What does Peter say to Jesus? He says, where else are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. Peter was hat, man. Eternal life, man, you get to live forever. I don't know if that turns you on. That turns me on. Now, if you notice there, he says, Fear not, little flock, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And this kingdom was, in Matthew 25, it says, The kingdom was prepared for you. I really don't know what that means because I haven't had time to study it out. But this kingdom that God has was prepared for us. It's his kingdom, yes, but it's a kingdom prepared for us. What does that mean? The, the rule of God in a kingdom, I don't know. Peter's answer was good, but still Jesus asks. He asks, do you, still, do you want to go away? Jesus asks that all the time of me. What are you going to do today? What do you want to do? Are you going to choose me today or are you going to do your own thing? What's up? I'm glad he asked that because I, I don't feel trapped. If I did, it would be like a demon trying to trap me. God doesn't trap me ever. He wants, he wants me to be free. He wants me to be free. Our forefathers understood this when they came to this land. They desired what all people desire, to be free. To decide their own destiny. I took a couple people to Reno the other day. And these guys were pretty goofed up. They were pretty goofed up. What they were going to Reno to do was to go out and live in the streets of Reno. They wanted to go and live in the streets of Reno instead of the streets of Fernley. Anyway, they're going down there. So I said on the way, have you got a family? And I was communicating with them a little bit. And he said, well, my dad's there. I says, and he this and he that. And she was a, um, a, a bit handicapped. So she says, I can go to my dad and this and this. And I says, well, why don't you go to your dad's house? She says, yeah, 
well, let's go to my dad's house. Let's go to my dad's house. So I took him to our dad's house, and I thought on the way there, what they're saying is I want to go to my dad's house, and then he's going to help us get back into the streets of Reno. I said, what do you have in the streets of Reno that you don't have at your dad's house? And she thought about it, thought about it. She says, let's just go to my dad's house. You know what they had in the streets of Reno that they didn't have at their dad's house? Freedom. Freedom to choose their own life. Freedom to do what they want. Freedom to not have to do what he said. They wanted freedom. It's the desire of every person. I thought, Lord God, help me. Help me to see the desire of people's hearts. Help me to see why they live on the streets when they could be living in the shelter of a house. Why they do this stuff. Why some people don't go to work because they don't want somebody to tell them what to do. Other people create businesses and become entrepreneurs because they don't want somebody to tell them what to do. Now, I would choose the latter rather than the former. Living on the street sucks. It's a drag. Uh, it's, it's no good. I, I've lived in my van before and things like that. It, it's just not fun. I'd rather live in a house and be married to a wife and have kids and have shelter for them and food every day and a car to drive and a yard to be in. Oh, praise the Lord. I like that better. Living in a van really isn't that exciting. Okay, so get over that. So, in Proverbs 25, 28, what really is keeping us like that? What's really keeping us bound, right? That we want to be free. It says in the 28th verse, it says, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. In other words, the thing that's trying to rule you is sin. It's not your dad, it's not your mom, it's not your boss, it's not your circumstances, it's not, it, no, it's not the government. It's you, your sin tries to rule over you. And so if you get a hold of that, if you get a hold of what's controlling you, it's, go read Romans sometimes for crying out loud. If sin is controlling your life, come to Christ and get that thing taken care of and you will be free indeed. Because who the sun sets free is free indeed. Praise the Lord. Okay. Okay. Now, I was reading in First Chronicles. Let's just go over there. I might be jumping around a little, so forgive me. Or not. <laughs> in the middle of an extended genealogy, and this is talking about freedom, don't get me wrong, I'm still on the same track. In First Chronicles 4, right in the middle of an extended geneal genealogy, it goes on forever, okay, if you ever read First Chronicles, but in the fourth chapter in the ninth verse, and you guys have read all this before, in the ninth verse it says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. And then it goes on, Chilob, the brother of Shulah, begot me here. Of the okay, right in the middle of that, God decides that this ought to be said about this guy because he was more honorable. This guy understood who God was. And, and not only that, he, could, he not only could but would answer his prayer. Now his name was, he causes pain. Okay? God calls him more honorable than his brothers. He asks for a blessing beyond the status quo. He was done with others running his life done with their opinions, done with living under the pain of his mother's pain, okay? My, bro my brother and my sister, they had something in their head. They saw the way my dad lived, and that we were okay and things like that, but then they saw a different side of the story. They saw how other people lived. And they decided they did not want to live in, in a, in this, on this level. They wanted... Uh, uh, to go to a different level. So they decided they were going to live different. So they went to school, etc., etc. And, they, and my, now my kids, my brother's kids, are living on his level, and his kids' kids 
are living on his level. They're not going back to where my dad was. So we don't have to be uh, controlled or driven by what we were. It is what we can become in Jesus Christ. Because once he got saved, all kinds of things started breaking out for my brother and my sister too. Praise the Lord. He made up his mind to live on a different level. Okay. Now he broke the curse of poverty over our family. Because my dad hated rich people. I'm sorry to say it, he just did not like them. Because he was really poor when he was a kid. And he got abused and, and persecuted by uh, rich people all his life. He told me so himself. Okay. Now... I wrote down here, well, how do you want to live? How do you want to live? Choose, choose you this day whom you will serve. Yes, you have a choice. Praise the Lord, you have a choice. Now in 1 John 2, I'm not sure I'm going to read this, but in 1 John, 1 John, this way. 1 John, the second chapter. And you guys who are following along, I'm pretty slow, so it's easy to keep up with me. Um, 228 says it says now little children abide in him that when he appears you may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming if you know that he is righteous you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God Therefore, the world does not know us because it didn't know him. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not been revealed what we shall be, but we shall know that when he, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as, it, as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself because he is pure. Now you notice there, that it, the first John it says, Behold what manner of uh, love the fathers be sold on us, so we should become the children of God. That's a big deal. I, I don't know if anybody else gets this stuff. Okay? So we have a choice. Okay? God says we do. Jabez, like our forefathers, and those who follow in their faith, have seen that the Creator reached out. He longs to empower us, not just to survive, but to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers, and to keep us from evil. Because of the Christ, cross of Christ we can. Now, some of us have been living by Psalm 91. No evil shall befall us, no plague shall come near our dwelling, all the things that fly by day, etc. Okay? Now, we've lived by this for a while, okay? Jabez broke the curse his mother spoke over him. Watch this now. Do you live under a curse someone has spoken over you? Or a curse you believe and spoke over your own life? These curses are real. I want you to know you can do this. People live under curses all the time. Look around. In Psalm 79, in the 8th verse, somebody read that for me, please. Psalm 79, the 8th verse. Okay, it says, Oh, do not remember former iniquities against us. Let your tender mercies come speedily to meet us, and that we have been brought very low. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name, and deliver us, and provide atonement for our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God? And we talked about this last week and the week before. It says, But he says, Deliver us. Okay? And it says in the 26th, uh, uh, well, I like this. Proverbs 26, speaking of curses, he says there, like a flitting sparrow or a flying swallow, so a curse without a cause cannot alight. In other words, if somebody's cursed you and there's cause to it, you don't have to live under that thing. It just can't take a hold of you. Now, go, okay, go to Galatians 3. How do I know this stuff? Galatians, the third chapter. It says there in the 13th and the 14th verse, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles 
in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, if you're living under a curse, you don't have to. If you're living under something, I, I said to, the, this morning, I was talking to, uh, anyway, I was talking to somebody this morning, they said, well, the men in our family are calm, but the women are all freaked out about everything. <laughs> and like, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. So, conspiracy theories get to them. Uh, now, conspiracy theories don't get to me. Conspiracy theories get to other people. It's just a, a, a thing inside of me that doesn't really go for that. I don't get freaked out. I'm just pretty calm most of the time. Okay? But now other people are very emotional and very that way. And I, I, I don't say they're wrong and things like that. But to, to, to get freaked out about things that you don't have to get freaked out about things. You don't have to live under the curse that my family and all the women are crazy and just freak out about everything. Not crazy, but crazy. You know what I mean. It's praise the Lord. So you don't have to live under those things. Uh, I thought for a long time that I had to be, uh, I had to be an alcoholic because, you know, everybody, my family drank. And I realized my brother doesn't drink, my sister doesn't drink. They broke the curse. We broke the curse. Praise the Lord. Now, not only does he allow us to choose because he's good, but because there's a time coming, he as a righteous judge will have to judge the earth. Okay? Not his creation. Uh, animals, dogs, trees, etc. But those he gave it to. He gave us this planet to establish his kingdom rule on. Right? You guys in here, okay. Yeah. And to expand his kingdom, which he knows would be a good thing. God gave us rules so we expand his kingdom. What's the, what's the alternative? The enemy expanding his kingdom. It's just the way it is, okay? Jesus came and showed us what that should look like. The enemy had again established his rule on the earth when Jesus Christ came. You can see it, okay? So, what does it look like? In 1 John 3, 8, it says he came to destroy the works of the devil. In Matthew, the... Ninth chapter, what does his kingdom look like? I like this part. 9.35. What does his kingdom look like? And the 16th verse it says uh, 9. Matthew, oh, sorry. Matthew 9.35. Okay. Then Jesus went about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. Now that's what it looks like. That's what the kingdom looks like. When he, Jesus came, he taught, he preached the gospel of the kingdom, healed sick and disease among the people. When he saw the multitudes, he had compassion. That's what the kingdom looks like. The kingdom looks like compassion and healing and wholeness. Now in Matthew 10, uh, and 7 and 8, it says, uh, he said to his disciple, disciples, and as you go, say, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. So that's what the kingdom looks like to us. That's what it looked like to Jesus. And two verses later, he says, this is what the kingdom looks like to you, okay? Okay. What would it look like for those who would do likewise? In 1016, it says, Behold, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpent, as harmless as doves. So as we begin to heal the sick and cleanse lepers and raise the dead and things like that doesn't mean everybody's going to like us. The kingdom of heaven isn't like that. The kingdom of heaven when it's established is a war. It is a push. There's always a battle to be won. A battle of whatever you're fighting. Demons, sickness, uh, persecution, whatever. Okay. And then he says in the 22nd verse, he says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. That's what's going to happen. 25 and 26. 
It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Anybody called you a demon lately? <laughs> Therefore, don't fear them. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. Woo, glory to God. Now listen to this. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And if one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will, it's not so. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not fear, therefore, for you are more value than many sparrows. Praise the Lord. Tribulation, yes. Persecution, yes. All of those things. I wrote down here, resistance, yes, but no fear. Enemies, hard things, yeah, but there's a reward. Hebrews 6 says, those who come to God must believe that He exists and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. There's always a reward in God. Okay? So, in Matthew 11, oh, I was going to bring a, well, just read it. Assuredly I say to you, among those born of women, there is none risen, one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. For from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. That word violent means uh, a forcer, or a uh, to press, energetic. To crowd oneself into. The violent take it by force. To crowd oneself into. In other words, keep on walking. So, with all that in mind, some of you have been going through a really hard time. Some of you listening on YouTube, uh, you're going through feeling very sick. I mean, Jamie called me yesterday. She's at the emergency room. Uh, they're, they're, they're helping me breathe. I don't know about you, I've lost my breath before and it is a drag. It's just the most terriblest thing there is, okay? I hate being sick, that feeling, you can't do anything about it. You know, everything's just, you're being attacked, okay? What I've, what I've observed in all these people that have gone through this stuff, what I've observed is compassion. I've observed faith, love, uh, don't fret, we'll get through this, etc. Not one peep of poor me. Not a one. Okay? Not one peep of, why is this happening to me? I haven't heard that. I haven't heard it once. Okay? Only, how's Buster? How's Jamie? Is Matt okay? Etc. etc. People call me. How are these guys doing? What can I do? Can I help you? Can I do anything for it? People call me. Hey, if these guys need anything, tell me. Okay? We can't go to the hospital and visit them. You know, they don't... <laughs> ah, I got exposed, so I can't even go to their house. Things like that. So, I'm just practicing what I preach. That's why we're not having church this week. I'm not sick. I, I'm immune, basically. I had this thing in February or March. I forget. So, I'm basically immune. And uh, you know this, uh, this Delta stream or whatever it is? Mutations of a virus are always weaker than the main one. Always. It's scientific fact. They're always weaker. So the people are getting this next one, are just getting exposed, and, they're, and then, then it's good, dying. Praise the Lord. Okay? Okay. I'm the only one really asking why. Well, God, why, uh, why, <laughs> why is everybody sick? <laughs> it bothers me. It just bothers me. It preaches healing, I preach uh, health and wholeness and truth and power, you know. Look at Buster, he's going to receive, you know. I've been praying over him. Well, I don't know what you guys pray for him, but Buster, receive. I've been praying that for him. He needs to receive the same things he has given away. Okay. There has been a consistency of love and dependence on prayer that is wonderful to behold. I have never seen people so consistent and so passionate about prayer and watching God do things. A love for God that has only gotten more fervent. What the enemy meant for evil, God has chosen to do good. All I see is the enemy losing. That's what I see. Praise the Lord. While the world is wringing their hands, Christians are raising theirs in praise because God is still good. 
people are still saying, God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, yeah, look at Paul and Silas. Well, they're in chains. I mean, we're talking persecution, we're talking freedom. They got these guys in jail. They, they are not in control of their own life. They're bound by chains, put on them by the world. And what does Paul say? Silas. They just got whipped. They're in stocks and chains. Silas said, dude, let's sing. Let's sing. <laughs> and Silas should have said, I wrote it down here. Lay down, Paul, you're hallucinating. <laughs> no. What he says is, cool, cool. What should we sing? I just joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Woo. All of my hope is in Jesus. And then he sings, how great thou art, how great. And the walls start shaking. The doors of the prison pop open. Okay, the world's got them bound. The world's got them crushed in. The world has a conspiracy against Christians, absolutely. They're kill, killing them all the time. They're bound in chains, and all of a sudden, the, no. When God, when you, your ways please the Lord, you will ask whatsoever you will, and He will give it to you. He answers prayer. He sets people free. The power of God is still available. God is still good, and He is still on the throne. He hasn't advocated for anybody. He hasn't advocated for a stupid virus. He hasn't advocated to uh, whatever binds you today. He hasn't advocated to that. So, I wrote down here, keep on praying, keep on pressing, keep on singing. Keep on magnifying God. Keep on praising His holy name. Now in Isaiah, the 54th chapter, and I'm just going to read this at the end. Oh, by the way, contentment. I got this out of a book. A candle called satisfaction that glows in the middle of your dark world. Isn't that good? Woo! Woo! That, that's so good. Okay, Isaiah 54. And this is the last verse, and I'm going to read you, uh, read you something out of a book I found. <clears throat> Isaiah 54, and we'll read there uh, 11 through 13. O oh, you afflicted one, tossed by tempest and not comforted, behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies and your gates of crystal, and all your walls of precious stone. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. I don't know about you, that makes me feel better. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My children will serve the Lord. My grandkids will serve the Lord. That's just the way it's going to be. Praise the Lord. Okay, in the 17th verse it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. You ever claimed that verse before? Oh yeah. oh yeah. Praise the Lord. Now in 55, 1, it says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come. Buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money on which is not bread and your wages on what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to eat. Listen carefully to me and eat which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness or abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Woo! Glory to God. 6 and 7 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God and he will abundantly pardon. No, we get off on that part that says, He will have mercy on me and abundantly pardon. But we get down on when he says, Let the wicked forsake his way. It's time that the wicked forsake his way. And he's talking to the children of God here. Okay? He's talking to the children of God. He calls them wicked. 
He says, turn away from that stuff. In 8 through 11 it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper for the same thing in which I sent it. Praise the Lord. Now in the ninth verse, it says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, and my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. He's talking about, uh, some, about intercession here. Now watch this. Um, when we are praying for people, and I know a lot of you are praying for a lot of people, just remember this. Light is more powerful than darkness. Truth is stronger than error. There is more grace in God's heart than sin in men's heart. There is more power in the Holy Spirit to convict men of sin than the power of satanic forces to tempt men to sin. Remember these things. There is more power in one drop of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus to cleanse men's heart from the stain of sin than there is in the accumulated filth of men's sin since from Adam to Eve, since Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. God is still on the throne. God is still powerful. God can still forgive. God can still set free. And God still heals. Praise the Lord. And you guys that have been praying, some of you have been, uh, some of you uh, have uh, spiritually sick. And I was going to cross this bridge a little while ago. But if you're spiritually sick today, if you're feeling less dead, and if you feel uh, separated from God, if your heart is broken and, and you don't, see your prayers doing anything. Don't get concerned about that. Press in. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. And I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You still have a high call of God in you. You still have, what does old Joel Osteen say? He says, you have greatness inside of you. You have a seed of greatness inside of you. Let that be. Let God be your fear. Let Him be your dread. Don't get afraid of all this stuff. And don't go for these conspiracy theories. Fight against evil, yes. Stand against evil, yes. Contentment. A candle called satisfaction that glows in the middle of your dark world. Praise the Lord. So, Father, I thank you for your grace, your mercy, your power. And God, if, if, I, if I sounded a little angry today, it's because I do not like the enemy. But, God, I love you. I love you more than life itself, more than breath. And I know these people that are going through this love you more than even their breath. And I thank you, Lord, there hasn't been a peep out of them that says you're still not God. Thank you, God, for taking care of people. Thank you for calling us that we're not your people right in the middle of, of our transgressions and sins. And you called us, brought us in by the blood. Thank you for forgiving our sins, Lord. Bless those who listen today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bye. <laughs> Did I do it over?